Wow, we have a really big group of people here today. Good morning. Yeah, time track. Okay, still. Okay, so uh, firstly, I'm really, really glad uh, to be here with you guys. Uh, I know Pastor Siu Chai for quite a... From right when I started uh, Treasure Box with my husband in 2018, actually. And uh, I think I, I spoke in the morning service, uh, in the previous service, that I've seen him serving as a in children ministry. I've seen him serving in senior ministry. And then I think I follow him through the different churches that he served, and today I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, but you are in for a good treat because he's also one of the sweetest and authentic person I've known. Pastorship aside, as a person, uh, my husband and I, we enjoy all our makan session with him that we can talk uh, authentically about serving God and which is what we're going to be talking about today, yeah? Okay, so once again, good morning. But today is also Mother's Day, so I want to honour all the mothers in our midst today, but I want to change it out a bit. So today, I'm going to invite all the moms to remain seated. And the rest, you all do the work. Can you all stand and give our moms a round of applause? Moms, you stay seated, okay? So, happy Mother's Day to all of you here. Thank you for giving yourself so tirelessly and selflessly every single day. We love you and we appreciate you. Aww. Nice. Okay, let's, let's sit down. <laughs> I realise I don't ask you all to stop clapping. You all really very good there. Okay, but I have an issue. Can I have the monitors? Because I feel I'm only having the wang wang from on top. Yeah, thank you. All right, so thank you the, uh, to Pastor Siu Chai as well as the pastoral team for having me today. Uh, I count it a huge privilege each time I get to hold the mic or get to speak with people because it shouldn't be taken lightly and neither should. Uh, I just feel that I should be able to. So I thank you for the trust uh, from the church that I can speak today. Okay, you may find me a bit familiar because we have done several children's programs with your church, but I didn't... Do I see any of you who watch our YouTube channel? Oh, are you okay? Wave. And then maybe you are now a youth because when you were in primary school, you watch our YouTube channel. Okay, where are you? <laughs> okay, so... Let me introduce myself briefly before we uh, dive into the message today. So on the screen now, you will see my family. Uh, so you see my husband and then my two beautiful children. Nathan is 13 and my daughter is here with me today. Uh, she is my designated cheerleader today because my husband and my son, we tag team. Today they are at Crystal Light Methodist also sharing a word over there. So a little bit about our ministry treasure box, right? We started it on 9th August uh, 2018 in response to a burden that God has laid on our hearts specifically for Christian families. And we chose National Day because I told my husband, this shall be our gift to this nation. A, a country that has provided us with not just education, but a safe place that we could grow healthily. So when we were, felt that it was our call to serve families, especially Christian families, we chose National Day. Okay, so in a nutshell, we want to see families grow closer to God and to each other. And we hope to equip families uh, in this area by helping them discover the treasures of knowing God and experiencing God through worship, word and prayer. Okay, so now Emmanuel not around. So in the morning, no, yesterday I met in the, uh, Pastor Emmanuel and then he said, Esther, why today never bring your book table? Then I'm like, mm, it's Mother's Day, I want to be pretty, pretty. I know I'm outside selling things. So I say, okay, but I will, go, <laughs> I will give all of you a 10% discount on my web store. So the promo code shall be AMKMC10. Okay, so if you want to shop for things on my website, have 10% off just for the Amokyo Methodist Church family. Okay, so Elvi and I, we are the founders of Treasure Box, right? I really think that this word founder is just a fancier name for this thing called Pao Ka Liao. Agree? Any entrepreneurs or startups here? Okay, it's really just Pao Ka Liao because you just have to own self, do everything. 
So at the stage that we are now, sometimes we have to write content, we have to design, we have to film, we have to edit, we have to pack products, we have to pay stickers, we've got to mail out orders, got to handle customer service of people telling me that there's a dent that I cannot even find on the book that I just mailed out to him. So there are so many things to do and thank God my team is super big. Two of us. Okay, my husband and I, but I cannot say that because my daughter is here. She's giving me death stare now. It's like, what about Goko and I? It's a team of four, which is true. They've been serving alongside us since preschool days and they've been great, great help. So last year, we started our equipping arm called Kidmin Singapore and our aim is to help children's ministry leaders and volunteers rediscover their calling, build competencies and to be able to find a wider community that they can uh, know that they are not alone. So if you are a children's ministry worker here, uh, join us. You realise that we can learn a lot of things with each other and grow together. Okay, so those are the two big pieces that I'm always very busy with, okay? But there are also other things that I'm currently doing. So I'm also the co-founder of SG Families, a ground-up movement that works with MOE, MINDEF, and uh, different schools, PSG, to help grow wholesome families. I'm also a part-time lecturer with National Institute of Education, specifically helping to mentor and supervise uh, teachers who will be starting their career. And uh, I'm also the member of two school advisory committee. Uh, I love doing work there because I used to be a teacher and sometimes I do miss those days so I just want to keep putting my foot in every place I can still have some things to do with local school. Just a fun fact here, I will give away one of our newest book called Why is Good Friday book, Good to someone who can guess what subject I used to teach. Oh, you raise hand first. Hey, you follow my Instagram is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am the, they, they kiddingly like to say I'm the nightmare com combination. I was a Chinese teacher, come discipline mistress. Hey, don't walk out leh. <laughs> okay, so uh, I enjoy school, but God has a call for different people in different seasons, so I'm doing this. Sometimes I model for a local women's fashion brand called Tracy Amy, of which all the mothers here, I'm going to give you 10% off <laughs> by just keying in Esther 10, okay? But that doesn't mean the husband cannot bring home this information and buy something for your wives. And the children also can. Uh, time to time, I, uh, I will appear in some advertisement like uh, a McDonald's ad that I took half a year to want to eat McDonald's again because I ate 17 sausage McMuffin in this shoot. <laughs> the first two I ate and I swallowed. Then the director said, do you know that you can actually speed it out because there's a plastic bag at the bottom? So I suppose that, <laughs> then speed. <laughs> if you swallow 17 burgers, it's no joke, okay? And then, uh, yeah, the other thing, Suntech, that I luck my parents-in-law just to eat non-stop again. Why is it that all oh, my advertisement is eating? I need to think again. <laughs> and on top of all these things, I recently also become a parent. Meet my cat! Hey, hello? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so this is my cat, Plucky, the Fung cat. He is a rescue cat with only three legs. He's very lovely, just not this morning. Because I don't know why, he decided to wake all of us up at 4.55am this morning. And I have not heard a cat meowing this much on learn how to tap on my bedroom door. So uh, I will have to have a conversation with him after this, but I'm very tired. But God is my strength, amen? Okay, today is WSCS Sunday and the theme is Serving God as a Family. Maybe some of you look at my whole list of things, you're like, oh, yo, why you all do so much? But you may also feel like, hey, is this how it looked like serving God as a family that your children move around with you, you and your husband are serving? Does that mean that serving God as a family means being busy and doing a lot for a God together as a family? Maybe in our minds, we believe that, oh, if we do so much, that's the way we will fulfill Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me and my household, we will... Ah, so, is it that 
To serve God means we have to look at the different spheres of our lives, career, family, hobbies, ministry, and try to find that balance, that sweet spot that we can do everything and succeed in every area while trying to also bring up children who are men and women of God <gasps> and also have time to watch Queens of, Queen of Tears. Okay, you finished last episode already, right? Oh, very cute, all the guy. <laughs> My husband not here. <laughs> But you see, all the things we are trying to do, then we're trying to balance. Sounds inspiring or is it very tiring? Quite tiring, right? So today I hope to try and speak into this issue on what it really means to serve God, be it as a biological family or as part of the larger family of God. And we're going to start with debunking a long-held myth, Okay. One question that Elvin and I always get is, wow, 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 how you all do it? Huh? How do you balance your ministry, your business, your marriage, your kids, your family, your friends, and your need to watch K-drama, your need for your extended family to have your attention, and your attempt to also want to lose some weight, which, never mind. So now with us being Liao at Treasure Box, you know, and, try, and Kit Min, trying to raise my two teenagers properly, Honestly, it is very tiring, right? And just last week, who are the hardcore Star Wars fans here? They don't have? Oh, have one only. <laughs> okay, then uh, this is for you. Uh, my husband is a hardcore Star Wars fan, but we have been so busy that he felt so horrible that night on May the 4th because he feel that as a hardcore fan, what must you do on May the 4th? You must watch a Star Wars movie or at least wear something that has a Star Wars logo on it. But we were so busy because it is also exam season. We are also ramping up for all the June holiday camps. May the 4th, basically we did revision and then we slept. I think the reason why a lot of people like to ask us, hey, how your balance, how your balance? Uh? Because actually this is the issue we are all facing today. We are trying to, it's the concept of we are trying to find that balance in the world where there are so many huge demands placed on us. In fact, the Japanese have a name for it. The sweet spot where everything falls into place very well is called Ikigai. Okay, we're going to see it, okay? Ikigai is the confluence point where you can do what you love, which you are good at, wow, the world needs it, and the best part, you get paid for it. Who wants that Ikigai? I really wish I can find that Ikigai because it just looked like, wow, everything is perfect. But the problem here is balance, uh, whether it's work-life balance, whether it's work-life family balance, whether it's work-life family ministry balance, I mean, you can add as many to this balance thing, is actually impractical and impracticable, right? Why? Why is it this way? Because balance is subjective. What looks like balance to me might not look like balance to someone else, especially if that someone is actually my boss or my mother. <laughs> like my son always like, Mama, digital balance, I need... my digi He defined digital balance, i.e. Minecraft time, to be one hour, 15 minutes. But to me, a balanced Minecraft time is zero. <laughs> Am I offending you, sir? <laughs> Or maybe some adults play Minecraft too. Okay, so it's subjective. I walk into office, my idea of work-life balance is I will knock off at 5 p.m. sharp every day. But my boss, who also pays me, may have a different definition of work-life balance, right? So tell, share with you all a little story. So the first year I was appointed as subject head in a primary school, that was 13 years ago. Okay, uh, that year, I ran the school's first ever prefects camp. Uh, and this is after I spent quite a long time to set up a full student leadership framework structure and training program. And that time, I was seven months pregnant with my firstborn, my son. And while well, I remember that, that, that period of time, I was running up and down the stairs. I even did an amazing grace, uh, amazing, well, did a lot of grace, did an amazing race with the students. And the following month after that, it was time for year-end performance review. Okay, so I'm like, this year do a lot. Sure, okay. And then, 
I got two outstanding contribution award with monetary reward. I'm like, sure, good. Because got money means confirm plus chop good. You know? So, when I was about, when I was meeting my reporting officer, we, uh, then she was my HOD, yeah? uh, I was confident that I'm going to get some praises from her. But she said that I did not do enough. It was, it was really quite confusing for me. So I'm like, uh, I'm someone, uh, angry cry, sad cry, happy also cry. So I, I was like, going to tear up. And I told her, so and so. But I gave my 100%. And she said this sentence that stayed with me for quite a while. She said that, sorry, your 100% is only my 20 uh, after that, I went to give birth and I extended my maternity by two more months because I'm like, can you do pan? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. It's because I just, you know, my priorities are different, okay? I hope none of you know my former boss 13 years ago, okay? Mm, but you see, that's why balance is honestly no such thing. Lah. Because you can never quantify it. Like, oh, how many hours a week here? How many hours at school? How many hours at church? How many hours spent on my interest area? There is no golden ratio. Agree? So even if there were, like, okay, by numerical quanti quantity, maybe you can allocate. But what about quality? Huh? I feel that 20 minutes Minecraft time is good quality gameplay, but my son will think otherwise, right? So there are so many things that come together and you realize that balance is a myth. And for me, over the years, the pursuit of Ikigai really exhausted me. Because that sweet spot, frankly, quite hard to find. Uh. Like now sometimes, oh, I hit the, oh, I'm doing what the world needs. I'm doing what my passion led me and God told me to do. Ah, yeah, but am I well paid for it? Ah, and then the sweet spot cannot be hit, right? But if I keep pursuing this, it's going to be very tiring. And what's the antidote then to this striving? If balance is just a myth, ah, then what should be our reality? What should be our reality? So one of my favourite verse is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I don't think many people uh, really use this as their life verse, but it is an NLT version. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Okay, I specifically like the way Eugene Peterson paraphrases it in the passage. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. Okay, I'm going to make you all read it with me. Because I think there are some very important moments if we read it together. Okay, shall we? Your, your can one, right? Is it allowed? Yeah, ma. Okay, uh, your pastor say can. You better be loud enough. Okay, let's do it. Okay, one, two, three. If people can't see what God is doing, wow, well, sounds dangerous. What about it? But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. So take a moment to think about this verse. What if, instead of pursuing balance, we stop and listen to and attend to what God is revealing to us instead? What if we pursued blessedness over balance? What if serving God has less to do with what we are doing and more to do with how we are living? How then can we attend to what He reveals to be truly blessed? So today, uh, we're going to be talking about serving God, but I'm going to give you all three simple ideas on how we can serve God best. And then maybe I can test you all after that. Oh, it feels so good, you know, have a mic, and then you can be a teacher again, and then force everybody to read, to answer questions. But I cannot send people to stand at the door if you are dozing off. So you are going to laugh at my jokes and listen, right? We can do better. <laughs> okay, so point number one. We serve God best when we know our season. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, uh, the NIV version. Uh, honestly, 
when I was looking at this verse, a lot of people like, what does this verse say? So let's read. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. Okay. Honestly, we may never be able to achieve that balance. But we can know the season we are in and determine what should take priority in that season. The sons of Issachar were described as men who understood the times and who knew what Israel should do. And because of that, they were confident to take steps after that. So understanding what really matters for the season you are in is so important. Whether you are single, whether you are newly married, you are married, you are new parents, you are parents of teenagers like me, or parents of adults or grandparents, do you know... Do you know what is the most important in the season that you are in? Okay, to help you understand a bit better, I'm going to use the analogy of a tree, okay? A tree stays... Okay, this tree that we're talking about is not the Singapore rain tree that is the same pattern because we only have one season, okay? So, an analogy of a general tree. A tree stays alive and thrives through all four seasons because it does what it's supposed to do in each season. For example, in winter, what is a tree supposed to do? Huh? Okay, in winter, the, the tree looks very pathetic, right? Tui tui wa, no? Dry branches. But it is actually doing what it needs to do, which is to grow very deep roots in winter. Then what about spring? The tree is to grow new leaves in spring. In summer, the tree is supposed to produce fruits, stretch out your branches to provide shade for the people. And then in autumn, it is supposed to shed leaves. Why must shed leaves? In preparation for winter. So, a tree has to go through these four seasons and do what it is supposed to do in each season in order to thrive. So a healthy, tree, a healthy tree is honestly not one that can do all these things at all the same time. Can you imagine in winter a tree trying to bear fruit? Cannot, right? Because whatever it's supposed to do in that season is to prepare for the next. So similarly, a healthy person is also not someone who can do everything at the same time. So, I'm going to tell you all that it is okay that you're not doing everything at the same time. Maybe perhaps for you right now, your season looks like winter. Dark, gloomy, lonely. But could it be that this season, if we want to do what we are supposed to do in that season, is to basically, in your own solitude moment, dig deep into the Word of God, build a close relationship with Him in preparation for the next. So, the verse says, the secret is to attend to what He reveals. Uh, for Elvin and I, honestly, the, the starting part of our journey, yes, God revealed to us what we're supposed to do to serve Christian families. But finding that balance while obeying God's call, it wasn't easy. And when we find finally did what God wanted us to do, <coughs> that is when we can confidently attend to what He revealed. <coughs> but I want to remind all of us that similar to trees, seasons come and go. So even though you may feel like, Esther, this season is not what I like, can I let you know that those seasons will also pass? What we need to do is to make the most of each season before it goes. So the question here is, do you know the season that you are in? Are you actively listening out for God's voice to tell you what you have to accomplish in this season of your life? All right? Uh, because I want to emphasize that when you know the season that you are in and what God has called you to accomplish, it gives value to your yes. It also gives value to your no. Okay, which one of you sometimes find it very hard to say yes to something or find it very hard to say no to something? Have, right? I mean, many of you are nodding. Because if you know that maybe this season you want to be more active in church, but what about my work? 
But if you know this season, I will be able, I'm supposed to put more time in church ministry. I tell you, you have confidence to go to your boss and say, sorry, Saturday, this special event for the company, I can't do it because I have commitment in my church. And you have no fear. And you know what? Favour will be shown to you from your bosses. But I, it can also look a different way that you feel that this season, you're supposed to be very active at your workplace because God has destined maybe something, someone there that you're supposed to impact. You will also have confidence to go to Pastor Xiu Chai and say, uh, sorry, ah, this weekend I won't be there. And you will not be fearful. And He will also trust as you communicate your season. So, knowing your season will give value and confidence to your yes and your no. Okay? And if we really want to serve God well, we need to begin by taking time to discover what's in for me now. Okay? Point number two, we serve God best when we know our role. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, right, we all play many roles. Actually, if I give you all one minute now and you count the different things that you have to do, you realise 10 fingers also maybe not enough. Okay, so we play different roles and we wear different hats at different time in our day or even different time in our lives. But we must know what our fundamental role is so that we can determine where our service to God is most authentic and meaningful. So a good question to ask ourselves is, in which role are we irreplaceable and indispensable? So for me, uh, the role is actually found at home. As a wife and a mother, I need to understand that in a family context, I'm irreplaceable and indispensable. No one else can fulfill the role of a wife to Elvin. If someone can, I'll be in trouble, <laughs> right? So for example, if I get a call from Elvin right now and say, hey dear, I need you over right now, or the kids need you right now, and I truly know my primary role, the role that only I can play, then I can tell you I will confidently stop right now and walk off the stage to go to my children or my husband. Because no one else can do my job as a wife or a mother, but somebody else. In this case, I'm only left with one pastor here, right? He can surely come up. I can leave my iPad here. You just continue to read the script, but the examples will be a bit weird like, for you. He can do it because I'm indispensable and irreplaceable there. So when you know your role and who God has called you to be, you will realise that you have no hesitation. You have no power struggle. You don't need to FOMO, a fear of missing out. And your decision-making will be much easier. Why? Because you know where your true assignment lies and what it truly means to serve God. But I just want to put out a caution for all of you here. In all aspects of life, we can be easily tempted to look at someone else's life and see them as the model of godly service. Okay, we'll be tempted to do what they do, we'll be tempted to sacrifice the way they sacrifice or to walk the same path that they are taking. But the problem is, what, it, the problem is that we will aspire to do what they do instead of being inspired to discover the unique role that God has created for us to fulfill. And honestly, if we are just merely imitating somebody and what somebody else is doing, do you know what you'll end up with? you will end up with a superficial and outward kind of service to God that is only skin deep and is more concerned about how we look when we are serving than what we are actually doing. And to me, serving God is really about knowing our role. And you know the story of Mary and Martha, right? In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. I read it and I want to have a... How to say, uh, my honest moment here, okay. I always wonder how Mary must have felt watching Martha being so busy while running in and out. Well, make sure the cup is placed nicely. Then make sure the table flower is blooming perfectly. And getting things ready for Jesus, right? I wonder how Mary must have felt. Because if it's me, uh, I honestly don't dare to just sit at the feet of Jesus. You know, the, the kind of moment you'll be like, 
wow, my sister's so busy, I'm not helping. Uh, is that right or not? Uh? Maybe I should help. Uh. Does it look bad on me that everyone is getting ready uh, for the dinner and then I, all I want to do is sit at the feet of Jesus? So I have had those thoughts before. And I wonder if Mary was tempted to also go and help. I know I would have been. Okay? We want to serve God, but our service actually made us anxious and troubled about many things in the end. So I take some time, I took some time, like, then how come Mary can resist the temptation? I realize it's because Mary understood her role. But not just any time. Mary understood her role at that moment. I'm quite sure when Jesus had left the house, Mary will go and do the house chores, right? But at that moment, she understood her role. And that moment, she simply sat and listened to Jesus. And that's why Jesus say what? Jesus says that she chose the good portion, the better thing. She wasn't distracted by the activity or the work of others because her eyes were fixed on Jesus alone. Big disclaimer here, I'm not against Martha serving, okay? I think Martha got upset with Mary and even with Jesus because she was quite upset with Jesus also. Because she felt like, hey, I'm doing so much, I'm serving so hard, leh. yet I'm missing out on the intimacy and the closeness with Jesus. Maybe in her heart, she felt like, what like that? But also deep inside her heart, she probably knew that all Jesus wanted was to spend time with his friends. But maybe cultural obligation or maybe customary things like a oh, woman is supposed to do that at that time. Ah, you must think of that period of time. Women maybe had to do that, right? And what is expected of her according to custom and traditions. But as a result, she got bitter. She got frustrated. She got resentful. Even with Jesus, eh? In her house, she can still feel this way. So, all of us here, each of us really need to understand the role that we play in God's house and in our home. What we get busy with should reflect the role God has created us to play. Our service to God must stem from a deep, deep love for Him and from an understanding of the role that He has given us to play. And the good thing about this thing is, I'm going to say something important, okay? Actually, all are important. Because I'm going to test you after this. <laughs> and when we are able to do so, you will realise that you start seeing everything you're, you are doing as worship unto the Lord. So after that, you realise that, okay, whether it is about standing on this stage to preach or changing a diaper at 3 a.m., or chong swa with your platoon mates for the NS boys, or even rushing a report for your boss in the wee hours, or bring your grandchildren to the park. You realise that you will do it confidently, happily, because you realise that everything that you are doing is worship unto God. Isn't that wonderful? But the problem is, how come we end up sometimes not being in this state? It's perfect. perhaps we don't know our season, we don't know our role, and we, what was the verse? We stumble all over ourselves. Okay? So what is the primary role that God has ordained you to fulfill in this season of your life? Do you find fulfillment in that? Or are you jealous or envious about what others seem to have? So before I go to my last point about serving God well, I need to ask, what was my first point? We serve God best when we know our seasons. We serve God best when we know our role. But you may say, oh, my God, so easy. Finding my season, finding my role. That is why I need us to land on this third point. We serve God best when we abide in Him. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5 and verse 9. Very special verse to me because <clears throat> I had a Sunday school teacher who loved to transform scriptures into songs. And uh, we, we sang a, a long, long song about God is the true vine. I, I, Okay, it was all in Chinese because when I was younger, it was a Chinese church. Okay, never mind. So that, that was a very memorable moment for me. I'm going to read out to you. Follow me, okay? 
I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And it hops over to verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Okay. What is Jesus calling his disciples to do? Is it to bear fruit? Huh. But maybe sometimes you're like, oh, God has called me. I need to do many, 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 many things. But Jesus was not just calling his disciples to bear fruit. The imperative is not, you must bear fruit. The imperative is three words. You okay? Oh, very good. One more time. Abide in me. In fact, bearing fruit can only come about when we abide. Abide in what? Abide in his love. If you truly want to serve God as a family, you need to learn to abide in Him as a family. If you want to serve God as a church, we need to learn to abide in His love. And to abide uh, doesn't mean, uh, okay, we cease all activity. We just chill. Soak. No, abide in Him means that whatever we do, we choose to stay connected to the source. Abide in Him means whatever we do, we choose to stay connected to the source. And who is the source? What is the source? He who governs the season of our lives. He who sets boundaries and roles in place. He who created and established every institution, be it work, marriage, ministry, family, or even recre. When we understand that everything we have comes from Him, He is the source of the wisdom we need, He's the source of the strength we need, and that He loves us and created each of us with a plan and a purpose in mind. That is when we can truly say like how Joshua said so confidently. You know, Joshua was so confident because he learned to abide first. And what did he say? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So later, the worship team is going to come and sing a quiet song. I have prepared two reflection questions for us that we will be reflecting. And I don't know what season you guys are in. Maybe some of you are in the season that you are stretching your branches to provide shade for people. Then do it confidently. Love someone, mentor someone. But maybe your season is the dark and gloomy winter. It's cold. I pray that you will also ask God, what are, you, what are you revealing to me for this season? I don't understand. But why we're doing reflection right here and now? Because when we leave this place and all the requirements of life overwhelm us, maybe we have no time to think and be refreshed and be rejuvenated that this is the season that I have to do what God reveals and attend properly to what He has told me to do. Okay? But before that, let's pray. Shall we bow our heads? Hallelujah. Dear God, we thank You that You are God over every season and over every person here. You need us together in our mother's womb and even before the foundations of the world were laid, You already had good plans for every single one of us. You created us for fellowship with you and you are the one who prepared good works for us to do so that you may receive all the glory. Thank you that we do not need to spend our lives looking for satisfaction in the things we do or in the achievements we have. Our truest satisfaction comes from knowing you and from walking in the paths that you have laid out for us to walk in. I pray that our hearts and our ears will always be tuned and turned to you so that we may hear your voice and know your heart for us always, so that we can truly experience the fullness and the abundance of this life that you have given us. God, I pray for every one of us here, 
that today we will lean in. Lean in, O oh God, to hear your very heart beat, O oh God. Because only with that intimacy, we can hear your heart beat. The tempo of our lives, the tempo and the speed of things. God, I pray that our desire is to go closer, to draw closer and closer to you. And today, Lord, we also want to pray a special blessing over every mother, be they biological or spiritual. May they discover today that you see beyond what they can or cannot do. You see the value and worth that they carry. May all the mothers here find peace and joy even as they carry out that sacred duty of motherhood in the midst of all the other responsibilities they have. For those who are alone in this parenting journey, we ask for a special grace to be extended to them that they would experience your hand and your provision in miraculous ways as they bring out their child in the way you have directed. God, we thank you for this time that we have together. Speak to us, O oh Lord. We want to hear your voice. We want to know our season. We want to know our role. We want to abide in you. Because God, you are worthy of it all. So we pray all this in Jesus' most precious and mighty name. Amen. So as we flash the questions again, don't be in a hurry to want to sing along or what. But let's take time. Because once we're out of this door, we get busy again. Find something that you can thank God for, even if it doesn't look that great. Find something and ask God, what should I do? How should I do? Let me know, God. I want to be confident in the way I'm addressing the issues in my life because I want to abide in you. Amen. Thank you so much.